A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 17th December. On the front page you have students erupt in nationwide protests. So stung by brutal police action at Jamia Millia Islamia and Aligarh Muslim University, students took to the streets in Chennai, Puducherry, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Lucknow, Varanasi, Kolkata, Guwahati in solidarity. Even as political leaders held rallies and dharnas against the Citizenship Amendment Act. So here you can see, the, even Mamta Banerjee from West Bengal has declared that she won't implement citizenship law or NRC in her state. Then below you have, government releases rupees 35,298 crore in GST compensation. So this was the complaint of the states that the GST compensation has not been released to them. So when GST was introduced in 2017, it was said that states would be compensated for the next five years. So the, for this, uh, actually a compensation, a cess was also uh, introduced, GST compensation cess. But then uh, the government says there's a shortfall and uh, compensation has not been provided, but then there's no linkage if, with a shortfall because government had assured, central government had assured states that they would be compensated for if there is a gap, means if their re revenues have reduced after introduction of GST because GST subsumes state taxes also. So this uh, uh, shortfall had to be compensated for. And since August 2019, government had not released GST compensation, but now it has been done. And this is RTI abuse led to fear among officials. So this is what Chief Justice of India, Sharad Arvind Bobre, has said that unbottled use of RTI Act had created a sense of paralysis and fear in the government and norms were needed to filter the requests. So we have already seen that there are a huge number of RTI uh, cases pending. The Central Information Commission, State Information Commission's appointments have not been done. There are vacancies there because of which these appeals have not been heard. So when there is no action taken against officials who are violating the provisions of the RTI Act, then then how how is it that RTI is creating fear? Because if uh, if RTI has clear provisions, so if there is any misuse of RTI. The judiciary has to adjudicate in that matter, but diluting the provisions of the RTI is not the way out, which the central government has done presently by the RTI Amendment Act of 2019. It has completely diluted the provisions of RTI. It has completely taken away the independence of Central Information Commission and State Information Commissions. And this is Unnao rape case, Singh are found guilty. So, a Delhi court has held former BJP MLA Kuldeep Singh Sengar guilty of raping a minor in Uttar Pradesh Unnao in 2017. So, this Unnao rape case has a long timeline. We have seen the, there were many attempts made to intimidate the victim, the rape victim. She had finally succumbed to her uh, injuries when she was set on fire a few days back. So, this was in news. The Unnao rape case victim died. Her aunt has died in various attacks. Her Vehicles earlier were rammed, her father was taken in police custody, her uncles were harassed in old cases. So now here in this case, uh, BJP, a former BJP MLA, Kuldeep Singh Sengar has been found guilty. On page 5 you have, Odisha villagers resolved to protest new steel plant. So hundreds of villagers from three gram panchayats of Odisha's Jagat Singhpur district have unanimously resolved to strongly oppose the proposed steel plant project of JSW Utkal Steel Limited. So they, they are planning to have a steel plant here on the land that was previously acquired for POSCO project of South Korea. So because of protest, POSCO did not set up the steel plant here. But now the land which has been acquired, you can see is being given to Jindal Steel, JSW Utkal Steel. On page 8 you have, School booked for enactment of Babri Masjid demolition. So, case has been registered against the management of a school in Karnataka's Dakshin Kannad district for enacting the 1992 demolition of Babri Masjid as part of a school event. So, they have booked on the offenses of deliberate and malicious intent to outrage religious feelings. So, this video clip was widely spread on social media and uh, the management defended it saying, that uh, our students have just e enacted events that have occurred in the past. 
they also enacted the Chandrayaan 2 mission. But many users said that this is the school management sowing the seeds of hatred in students. On page 9, you have the same coverage of front page news on Unnav rape case. So, court wraps CBI for delay in Unnav case, and there's a complete time end to give it here. And this is increased Lok Sabha seats to 1000, says Pranab. So, this is former president of India, Pradam Mukherjee, who has said that present strength of Lok Sabha of 552 is based on 1971 census. So, now it should increase to 1000. And below you have Lieutenant General Manoj Mukund Naravne, next army chief. So, he will replace General Bipin Rawat, who retires on 31st December. And this is Supreme Court orders status quo in RA case. So, petitioners who have challenged the felling of trees in RA forest in Mumbai, this tree, these trees were fallen to construct a metro car shed there. And uh, now the new government has also committed to identifying alternative land for the project. So, the case is before the Supreme Court too and Supreme Court has ordered status quo here. On the editorial page, the first editorial is climate of inaction. So, this says that India should not take comfort from its status as a low per capita carbon emitter. So, in terms of carbon emissions, we have huge carbon emissions, but in terms of per capita carbon emissions, it is low compared to other nations. But this article says that this editorial says that we should not be complacent in that context. We should still be, in, you know, taking action against climate change and initiating measures on those lines. And this is unfulfilled promise. So, this is regarding the protection of personal data of citizens. So, it says India's efforts to protect the personal data of its citizens fall short of privacy requirements. So, one aspect is personal data protection. There is a bill which has been introduced, Personal Data Protection Bill 2019. We have seen it in news that how it has been now referred to a joint parliamentary committee by the Lok Sabha. So, this talks about how the promises are unfulfilled in this bill because privacy concerns are raised. The lead article is the widening fissure in India's rule of law. So this is regarding relationship between the individual and the state and the government. It says it is marked by a deep pervasive imbalance of power. So the government has all the powers and citizens become helpless. And this is regarding British elections, in elections in UK. It says in conservative landslide, pain for labor. So conservative party won and labor lost. On opet page you have, this is an interview with Vivek Debroy. So he is the chairman of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. He says that half the states are growing at less than 6%. And he says if India has to grow faster, states have to grow faster. And this is regarding reservation for Anglo-Indians which has not been taken forward this year. So, it says, this article says that reservation needs to continue for annual Indians. The com community's troubles have been highlighted in a report in 2013. So, this is important. On page 12, you have Citizenship Act rules get ready. So, Union Home Ministry says that no auto automatic grant of rights will take place. Mig migrants must apply online for citizenship and the rules have been put forth to implement the Citizenship Amendment Act. On international page, you have ZWAF support for LAM despite setbacks. So, this is regarding Hong Kong. So, Carrie Lam, she is the leader of Hong Kong. So, Z is President Xi Jinping of China. So, it says government fully, he says government fully recognizes courage and assumption of responsibility you displayed in these exceptional times. So, they are supporting Carrie Lam. And the protesters in Hong Kong had one major demand that she should step down. But China continues to support her. Then on business page you have Future revenue is critical for finance panel. So, this is the 15th Finance Commission chairman, uh, N.K. Singh. The Finance Commission, 15th Finance Commission term has also been extended by one more year because revenues from GST are elephant in the room, he says. So, they also have to be taken into consideration 
So, need to consider an incentive structure for states in order to encourage increased tax collections is what he is looking into. So, it says states are lulled into complacency by the assured compensation sets. Then, this is growth slowdown not entirely due to global factors. So, this is RBI Governor Shaktikan Das saying that RBI saw momentum for slowdown building up and started cutting rates. And this is WPI, Wholesale Price Index, quickened to 0.58% in November 2019 against 0.16% in October. But there has been a year-on-year year slowdown. So compared to 4.47% November 2018, it's only 0.58% now. This is Wholesale Price Index, WPI. And this is... RBI kept out Muslim long-term visa holders from property buying rights. So, with the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act coming into force, Spotlight is now an RBI circular issued in March 2018 that allowed the new beneficiaries of the Act to buy immovable property. So, RBI notification under Foreign Exchange Management Regulation 2018 said a person being a citizen of Afghanistan, Pakistan, or Bangladesh belonging to the minority communities in those countries who is residing in India and has been granted long-term visa by the central government may purchase only one residential immovable property in India as dwelling unit for self-occupation and only one immovable property for carrying out self-employment. So here again Muslims have not been included. So emphasis has come, attention has been put on this now. And below you have BYD plans to make India a hub for South Asia business. So, this is Chinese firm Shenzhen based BYD Company Corporation Limited, which counts Warren Buffet among its investors. So, it is charting out major plans to electrify its presence in India. So, India is called a global power bank and it wants to make India a hub for its South Asia business. So, this is a $20 billion company. It already produces electric buses and batteries in India. And it has done a soft launch of its electric van also. So it plans to treble its lithium ion battery capacity in the country and also deepen its presence in electric mobility space. So this is a Chinese firm which will increase its presence in India. So that is it. These are the important headlines. Last page has sports related news. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asia.com. Thank you.